Hello YouTube! Hi guys! Welcome! Today I'm coming to you because we have the official patch notes, the maintenance information for the upcoming Brown Dust 2 update. As you guys know, we've had the 500 days uh, live stream very recently and uh, we've had a big preview of what was to come, but here we have everything official black and white, including character abilities. Very, very cool stuff. So let's get into it. First of all, obviously, the maintenance is on October 30th. We are getting a new character pact. It's the seventh. It's Contract Wars. Uh, we have a little bit of a synopsis here. So, <clears throat> in a world of Carter City, where salespeople seize contracts through force and power is synonymous with justice, a storm brews at Genar Industry, the city's leading corporation. The cause of a turmoil, the CEO's only daughter, Sayer, has just joined the company as a new hire. Starting her corporate journey, Sayer receives intense attention from all her colleagues. However, her status as the CEO's daughter complicates matters. She finds it challenging to navigate not just the fierce contract wars, but even ordinary social interaction. Will Sarah be able to transform into a competent salesperson amidst the chaos? As a blood-soaked battle for contracts among the salespeople begins, the true war is about to unfold. Coming to you this summer. Alright, I'll never do that again. I'm so sorry. That was so freaking cringe. Uh, anyway, so we are getting the character pack. It will be unlocked by clearing the story pack One Night of Blood, which is essentially the first story. This is like the tutorial. Not really. You know what I mean. So yeah, if you did the first chapter of the main story, you will get access to um, Contract Wars, which is great. Moving on, we have full voice acting support for Contract Wars, which is good, obviously. The season event, Cart War Z update. So we will be getting the seasonal event, so this is awesome. So on top, essentially what this means is that Contract War is a character pack, which means it's permanent. So you can play it now, you can play it later, you play it whatever you want. But on top of it, we have the season event. This one is temporary. It will be available after the update and it will maintain, it will stay here until November 40th. So essentially, uh, 14th, sorry, not 40th. There's no 40th day, my apologies. So essentially, it's gonna be available for two weeks as per usual. For the first week, we're gonna get the normal battle, challenge battle, field quest, field uh, fiend hunter uh, preparations, right? And the event shop. And then after the week two, well, after the week one is finished and week two begins, we will be able to actually take on the challenge of the fiend hunter, right? So keep that in mind. Take your time. You have one week to prepare your characters. Uh, so, you know, prepare them good. Uh, obviously, the currency we'll be getting through there will be able to be used in the shop as per usual. You can get a lot of goodies, you can get some free pools, you can get a, a free equipment of your rarity, two of them at SR rarity if you really care about that. You can get the material specific to that weapon, don't forget to get that, otherwise you won't be able to actually level up the equipment, the UR gear you get for free, uh, and just a bunch of other useful things, right? Um, we get the story of the Cod War Z event. After winning the contract war against Arkham, Mikhail and Lovencia find themselves in a whirlwind of activity, spoilers. On a usual commute home, they are met by ZOMBIES! Fleeing from the undead and seeking refuge in the office, Mikhail and Lovencia soon realize that the entire Carty city has been overrun by zombies. To make matter worse, even the employees of Ghana Industry have transformed into zombies. Will Mikhail and Lovencia be able to find a cure? A two department's head struggle to save Carter city from the zombie invasion begins. On the first day of the seasonal event, all stories will be unlocked, and you must complete the beauty story to access the next one. So this one is pretty simple. It's literally, you have like 10 chapters, you watch one, you get a few uh, dia, and then the second one unlocks. It's it's the classic seasonal event. We'll also be getting the event battle overview. They're divided into easy to challenge, normal battles, and challenge battles that are considering growth and strategy. Uh, this is the classic one. I'm not going to go over it. Essentially, you get five fights per day. And um, they stack up up to five, so just do the fight five. Um, the fight, the five fights. There we go. 
Um, also, once you clear like the 15 normal challenge, you can do a quick clear. If you're lazy, don't want to do the challenge one, which is pretty useful. So uh, there we go. We'll also be getting a field quest um, for Card of War Z. It is called Obtain the Cure. Uh, you need to collect the treatment vial that are scattered on the roadside within the time limit. Each vial gives you 100 points. You got to be careful not to touch the zombies. They'll explode on you. All the good. And obviously, you get some, um, some rewards from it. Um, which is, you know, nice. Moving on, the Finn Hunter operation, as per usual, we have one part preparation, one part fights, and the monster will be an abomination. Once a regular salesperson, the giant zombie abominations begin to unleash power attack on the city, seemingly seeking revenge for the hardship faced during their sales career. With a massive physique and the ability to communicate, the abomination appears to be different from ordinary zombies. Perhaps he holds the key to resolving the zombie crisis. There we go. Uh, on top of it, we can see the event shop here. Uh, we are getting Drodicate times times 3. Um, 5, essentially, that those are 15 pools. Some Tier of the Goddess, Gen Finn, you are gear, blah, 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 blah. You can pause if you want to have a better look here. Um, now, on top of everything here, we are getting some updates for the event shop. Um, so, the, essentially, what it means here is that even after the event is over, the, sh the event shop is essentially available for three weeks, even though the event itself is available for two weeks. On top of it, uh, they let us know that the current seasonal event, Akatsuki, which was from the collab, uh, the shop only will be available for one more week uh, after the update. Uh, moving on, we are getting some seasonal event bonus costume overview. If you own the designated event costume for each seasonal event, you can earn additional event currency at a certain rate in the seasonal events. So essentially, New Hire Seer, White Reaper Justia, The Lapis Witch Charizard, and Dill Snatcher Lovencia. Just having them means you get more rewards, um, which is good. Uh, we are getting some improvement to the Tower Salvation. Uh, addition of the Artifact Codex. So, an Artifact Codex has been added to display the Artifact Appearance the Tower Salvation with the respective effect, which is great. You can access it easily through the fourth icon, the left side of the main screen. There we go. Uh, on top of that, a new artifact combination feature has been added, allowing you to consume obtain artifacts to create new ones. You can only perform artifact combination in the sword tab at the bottom of the tower salvation floor selection screen. The artifact combination does not require other currencies or material. The artifact can be obtained through artifact combination of specific recipes and you will need to use designated artifact to create a new one. Icons indicating which artifact can be used as artifact combination materials will be displayed in the upper left corner of the artifact card. Artifact obtained through artifact combination cannot be acquired through any other means. Artifact consumed as material can be reacquired while progressing through the Tower of Salvation. Artifact you've already obtained through artifact combination cannot be combined again. So this is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, so th this is nice. The game mode is actually pretty fun. I I, I played it recently. I had a good time. Uh, you obtain some artifacts, and here we have a new progression system in this like uh, roguelike mode. Essentially, you can combine them. It's pretty nice. I like it. Ten out of ten. Would play that game mode again. Now, we have additions of new artifacts. We are getting 15 new um, combination on top of the 5 new artifacts, right? Um, and we get to see the effect of the artifacts here. I'm not going to go over them. They are good, probably. And uh, you can check all of their um, combinations effects uh, from the codex. On top of that, we are getting additional changes. Uh, the shop's name is being changed from Gatekeeper's Treasure Vault to Shop. <laughs> that way people don't get confused. And uh, the name of the treasure room would change to Artifact Room. Essentially, this is just kind of quality of life to make sure you know where to go. Uh, moving on, improvement to Main Quest Replays. This is very, very good. So essentially, they are adding a new way to very quickly replay through the main story pack in harder difficulty. So once you clear the normal difficulty, you will get a specific message um, to tell you which difficulty you can uh, attempt. So as you can see here, uh, very hard difficulty av available, hard difficulty available, just to let you know, hey, listen, you've, uh, you've done the normal mode, here you can do the hard mode if you want, which is pretty cool. Now we also get, so this is a nice quality of life, on top of it, we actually get the fast progress feature right here. So the feature will be added for faster completion of hard and very hard, hard mode once you've uh, accepted them. After clearing the main quest on normal difficulty, a fast progress button will appear on the quest UI. Tapping this button will display a fast progress UI screen as shown below. 
Um, so first of all, you can see a list of all the quests right here. You can see the summary of every part of the quest here, which is very cool. That way you can refresh your memories. Or if you, you know, you skip before uh, and you skip the, the little um, summary, you have it here. It's nice. You can see the participating allies, the combat power and the recurring combat power for the quest. So here you can choose what you want. Um, and you can view dialogue, replay cuts, quest cutscene, check enemy information from down here. This is the, the box right there, right? For non combat quests, e.g., moving to an inn, tapping the auto quest button will mark the quest is complete and grant the corresponding rewards immediately. For combat quests, tapping the combat button to engage in battle will mark the quest is complete and grant the corresponding rewards immediately. Awesome! This is fantastic. Essentially, you'll just be able to just power through everything very quickly. This is, this is nice. This is nice. Alright, improvement to the battle screen UI. Some UI elements within the battle screen will be improved. An end swap order change area. The touch area for changing the turn order will be enlarged to make it more convenient to change as shown in the image. Very cool. Uh, improvement of total damage visibility. The total damage delta monster will now be displayed below the chain damage to text to enhance visibility. This is great, right? Um, before, this basically was not there. So it was kind of confusing, and now it's all neatly packaged on the side. Lovely. Addition of knockback indicator in stat screen. Knockback information will be added to the character's stat screen. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's nice. I appreciate that. Um, just nice little quality of life. Additional filters. Filters will be added to the following section. Finn Hunter, Last Night, Battle Preparation, and Hope screen. Uh, the Finn Hunter team formation screen. Here you can... Use the filters at the top here. It's very nice because those filters were available in the character screen, but nowhere else essentially. So now we can actually use that everywhere, which is great. Um, we can see it here. We can see it there. This is awesome, especially for the battle preparation, because in battle preparation, having to go through everything and like pan everything was a pain deep in the butt. Home screen, the story cutscene will not have uh, will not have the filter for filters added. Filter will be added for skill cutscene and costume illustration. Okay. Uh, the damage critical hit text display for each monster will improve for better visibility. visibility. The text will not appear above the attack effect with a longer duration and increased font size. Critical hit text will be displayed in red. Lovely. The relay message shown at the top center of the screen during battle will be removed. Okay. The removal of world buff. Uh, the world buff feature will be removed to allow for more flexible responses in various situations. However, in the evil castle, permanent buff specific to the evil castle will be applied for high level strategies. There we go. The permanent buff applied in the evil castle will increase damage for all attributes without any attribute rotation, which is good. Um, moving on, there will be changes to the update schedule affecting the timing of some content. Um, I'm not going to go over them like a lot, but essentially um, th some of the events like uh, here, you can see here, the season 33 is going to be only one week after the November 4th is maintenance. Uh, so make sure you clear the Tower of Pride within one week to collect your flow clear rewards. Um, and afterward, it seems to be uh, going back to two weeks essentially. And uh, there we go. And uh, the clear score record for the official season, thir season 33 will not reset and will be maintain maintained until official season 34. The clear score for season 33 and 34 will be reset at season 35. Okay, so this is being changed for some reason. Uh, the Evil Castle Experimental Season 5 will run for three weeks. Okay. Seal of Event, the Seal of Event date on November 30th will run for one week only. So this is going to be a rerun, essentially, right? And um, essentially, you still will be able to get the two weeks worth of reward. Just uh, essentially, instead of having one week of preparation, you'll be able to actually fight the Finn Hunter the Finn Hunt right away, uh, which is great. Uh, we'll be fighting the Crab Monster, blah, blah, blah. This was from the summer event, click, click. Now, the good stuff. I mean, all of this was pretty good, but the, the gooder stuff, the goodest stuff. The new high, higher Sayer costume will be featured in the pickup events. This one will be available right after maintenance until the end of this patch on November 40th. And see, Seer. This here, she's cute. I've commented on her. I'm not going to do it again. But here, I want to look at her actual ability. Finally, we know exactly what she does. So, uh, Seer has only had one um, costume so far. It was Didi Seer, right? Uh, she's essentially like a, a taunt tank. But now we finally have a second costume, which is going to make her way more valuable, hopefully. So here we can see um, the, target is her, the target is herself, right? Uh, she also has a potential... Wait. 
Yeah, that's herself. Uh, and this is a knockback. She has a, just a, a knockback from one square. I'm not going to comment on the knockback. So, it costs 3 SP. The cooldown is 7 turns, which is quite significant. Uh, for 4 turns, every time you hit, all allies' damage dealt increase by 10% for 6 turns. Each hit adds 1 stack, up to a maximum of 99 stacks. That's gonna be so crazy for enemies that hit multiple times. Holy bananas. Okay, let's be real. Nobody's gonna reach 99 stacks. But it's absolutely bananas. Like, even if you get hit, like, let's say three times, that's a 30 bonus, like a 30% bonus for your entire team for six turns. It's so long. And, like, this is not like, oh, you have to get hit right away, right now. No. Every time you get hit for four turns, so if you're fighting like three enemies or like three instances of damage, uh, you get hit three times uh, for four turns. So you get 120% damage buff for your entire team. It ramps up, sure, but that's still very, very good, right? So it's like backloaded essentially. This is awesome. Okay, interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, and here we can see if you get upgrades, uh, that's an increase of 2%, 3% more, 2% uh, more. 3% more, and finally, 2% more. So, there is nothing else that changes. The SP cost is the same. The cooldown is the same. We it is, mm, This is simply a damage buff uh, scaling ability. Which means it goes from 10% to 20, 22%. So, same conditions, getting hit 3 times per turn for 4 turns. Now, instead of getting a uh, 3 times 4, 120% buff, you are going to be getting a... <clears throat> I, I don't know. I can't count. What is life? Um, four turns. Three times. Three times four. Twelve. Two twenty. Two sixty percent. Two hundred and sixty percent damage increase. This is absolutely bananas. And this is only in a situation where you get hit three times per turn. Imagine if there's way more enemies. Um, coupled with our taunt from the other costume. This is gonna be insane. Alright, the skill potential. There it is! Skill potential 1. Reduce the cooldown by 2 turn. This is absolutely awesome to see that the skill potential... Um, like, yes, the damage increase is gonna be very nice. But I think that she's gonna be easily playable even at plus 0. Because her skill potential are the one that's gonna be so massive... Uh, in terms of uh, making her better to use, feeling better to use, more smooth. Uh, the skill potential 1 reduces the cooldown by 2 turns. So it goes from 7 turns to 5 turns. Great. Uh, considering that the buff is 6 turns, uh, that means that the buff is going to last longer than how long the cooldown is. So you can make sure there will not be any downtime. Um, now what I wonder is... Is each hit specifically independent in terms of duration? Like, turn 1, you get hit once, it lasts 6 turns. Turn 2, you get hit another one, the new buff lasts 6 turns, but the previous one lasts only 5 turns. Or does it reapply and lengthen the duration of everything, right? Because if that's the case, for long fights, that means... For example, if the fights last 6 turns, that means you could potentially get, let's say... 3 every turn for 4 turns, so you get 12 buff, and then you can reapply the buff as suddenly you have, you know, 3 more, you have 15 stacks, right? I wonder. Uh, anyway, skill 2, increased ratio of damage dealt increased by 2 turns. So this means instead of, this is not the duration of the, the, the ability, but this one. So the buff will now last 8 turns, which gives you, I think this one is probably not as necessary, especially if you reduce your cooldown. But it also means that, you know, for long fights, this could be useful. Now, on top of it, the reduced SP consumption is great. So, essentially, with all the updates, upgrades, you'll be having a 5 turn cooldown for a 2 SP cost. And uh, the buff will last 8 turns instead. That's great. Now, on top of it, um, we do know that this will be added to the Powder of, of Hope shop and standard selective banner after the maintenance on November 21st. Lovely. The Deal Snatcher Levencia Costume and Levencia Exclusive Gear Superbia will be featured in the pickup event. Right. So, um, 
we can see here... Oh, they actually don't talk about uh, the other characters. That's fine. Uh, so she will be added after November 7th. Um, and she will be available until November 21st. The costume will be added to the Power of the Hope shop and the standard selective banner after maintenance on November 21st. Uh, they don't give us the information for her, but that's okay. Uh, you know, it's a... It's a it's a slow drip. <laughs> anyway, here we can see. Uh, so, Dear Statue Luvencia will be the second one. And you can see all of the schedule is here. Uh, I'm not going to go over that again. All you need to know is that Red Hat Rue will be available after the maintenance in the Mule War shop, which is great. On top of it, we're also going to be getting the Senate of the Great Witch Celia, Anime Sage Nartas, B Ring Idol Seer, and Disciplinary Committee Glacia. So, if you haven't gotten them, they will be available in the Powder of Hope, the Powder of Hope shop, or if you want more copies, obviously. Uh, and then here, the Piercing Magic Bow Alienir will be available from the Golden Thread shop, which is great. There we go. There's some big um, issue fixes, some bug fixes. I'm not going to go over them. You can pause here. Hope you took it in. Moving on. We also have an event after the October 30th. I'm going to go over this very quickly because I think it kind of recaps some of the stuff. All you need to know here is that to celebrate the 500... No, this is the... I'm sorry. The 500 login event is here. This one is the classic. Oh, if you upgrade your new higher seer, you get some draw tickets. This is classic, right? So once you, you try a draw, you get one ticket. If you get the, the, the costume, you get 10 tickets. Every time you plus one, you get 10 tickets until plus five, but you get 20 engine crystal. That's great. Now, this is the purely new stuff. To celebrate the 500 days of service, a login event will be held. So this will be between the maintenance on the 30th until the November 40th, 14th maintenance. We will get a total of 500 Magic Water Crystal, Fire Magic Crystal, Wind Magic Crystal, Light Magic Crystal, and Dark Magic Crystal, 120 Free Torch, as well as 10 Draw Ticket. This is great. We're getting some free stuff. It's always nice. Free time pool. Yatta. On top of that, there will be a login event. As long as you log in once, you get 10 free pool. So essentially, for celebrating the 500 days, we'll get 20 free pools and other goodies. Uh, we'll be getting a Halloween dice event. So those are the classic dice events, right? Essentially, you can participate in it from the event um, screen. And you can move the number of spaces in the game by the roll of the dice that will receive the corresponding rewards for each space they land on. And uh, this game can be played automatically. So if you... I think we had one recently. It might have been for summer. Essentially, from doing quest, you get dice. You use the dice. Every time you complete a full... Um, you know, a full turn of the board, you get some loot. And as you can see here, you get uh, Magic Crystal, Fire, Wind, Water, Light, Dark. You get uh, 3, 6, 900 free Dahlia, as well as 50 draw tickets. This is awesome, right? We are also getting the Carter War Season Pass. Um, this is Cool Beans. We get a bunch of free stuff um, right here. Uh, we get some, some free Daya, some, some rank up stars, all of that here. And if you purchase for the premium reward, you get more free, uh, not free pool, but you get more pools. Um, I don't know if this is the one that you can actually unlock for Daya. I know one of the paths, you can pay like 2000 Daya to get it. Essentially, you get it refunded by just like unlocking like the level 20. Uh, it might be this one, it might be another one, I might be a little bit silly. I don't know if it's getting the Eclipse character pass. The pass event for the Dimension Witch Eclipse will take place. You can earn the Eclipse costume, Dimension Witch, and Exclusive Gear SR Great Star Color Ornament. So obviously this is SR, not UR. But still, this is a free costume for Eclipse. We'll get one of those every, every big patch. So this is awesome to be able to get a character for free. So just don't forget to do all of those. And for this one... Mm, here it doesn't say how to buy it, so I don't know. Alright, moving on. We have the past level reward. Uh, so here, uh, this is just the rewards for all the missions here that you can accomplish. And you get the Dimension Wish. Yada! Moving on. We also have the event boosting mission event for Card War Z. Uh, which will give us, um, you know, you just complete the event battle, use, this, use the event uh, currency. And you get 600 Daya, so that's nice. There we go. That's everything for the upcoming patch. 
I know this was a long one. My apologies. Hope this was useful regardless. Um, and yeah, I appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. Um, and I'll see you after the updates. Or whenever we get new news about the new characters. Like, subscribe, comment down he uh, below what you think. Like if you think this was annoying. Or if you think that you're looking forward to the new Seer. Seer. Uh, and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers. One more.